A warm website word of welcome to each and every one of you. We're celebrating the sixth Sunday of Ordinal Time, and we're broadcasting from St. Kenneth Church in Plymouth, Michigan. My name is Father Tom Belzac, and we are pleased and honored that you choose to join us via technology this weekend. This coming Wednesday, February 17th, is Ash Wednesday, the beginning of the Lenten season. We will offer an Ash Wednesday Mass on our parish website. Please log in anytime after 8 a.m. on Wednesday morning if you care to join us and begin your Lenten season in prayer. Our service here in church on Ash Wednesday, we will celebrate Mass at 9 o'clock in the morning. We'll have a scripture service at 12.15 in the afternoon, and we'll celebrate Mass again at 7 p.m. on Wednesday, uh, the 17th day of February, Ash Wednesday. Ash Wednesday is a day of universal fast and abstinence in the church. The regulations for the Lenten fast and abstinence are on Ash Wednesday and Good Friday, those who are 18 but not yet 59 years old are allowed only to eat one full meal. Two smaller meals are allowed as needed, but eating silent foods between meals is not permitted. We are to abstain from meat. Those who are 14 years old and older are to abstain from meat products on Ash Wednesday and Good Friday. The church no longer attempts to prescribe the Lenten uh, practices in detail. The above regulations only highlight Ash Wednesday and Good Friday and the other Fridays of Lent. Our fundamental obligation is to make Lent a penitential season, choosing practices that are adopted to meet our own needs. We remind you of prayer opportunities throughout the Lenten season. Join us for morning Mass on Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday, 9 a.m. here in church. We begin our Mass on Tuesday morning with the Mother Perpetual Help, Novena. We will also have Adoration of the Blessed Sacrament. It will return to our schedule the first Tuesday following uh, Ash Wednesday. And Stations of the Cross are offered every Friday evening here in church at 7.30. For those of you who heard the announcement earlier this week of the Archbishop encouraging us to begin to return to the practice of our faith, I'd like to encourage you to perhaps... Uh, if you're able to join us for morning mass, there's only about 35 or 40 people in the church on Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday morning. Plenty of space for all of us. If you are available during the week on, on the mornings, morning mass might be a wonderful way for you to begin to return to a practice of the faith. Joining us on Tuesday morning for the Adoration of the Blessed Sacrament is again an, a wonderful opportunity, perfectly safe, very, very few people in church. Adoration normally will take place from about 9.45 in the morning until 11 o'clock each Tuesday morning. And as you heard, Stations of the Cross will be offered every Friday during Lent, beginning at 7.30 here in church. Again, based on previous year's participation, Stations, there are only about 30 or 40 people who join us every Friday evening. We hope and we pray that this Lenten season ahead will bring us closer to the Lord and allow us to carry the cross of Christ from ashes to Easter. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. The Lord be with you, and with your spirit. And mindful of our need for God's mercy, love, and forgiveness, we call to mind our sins. We invite the Lord to give us pardon and peace. 
Lord Jesus, you came to gather all nations into the peace of God's kingdom. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You come in word and sacrament to strengthen us in holiness. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You will come again in glory to bring salvation to your people. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory, glory to God, glory to God in the highest. Let us pray. O oh God, who teach us that you abide in the hearts of those who are just and true, grant that we may be so fashioned by your grace as to become a dwelling pleasing to you. Through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Leviticus. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron, if someone has on his skin a scab or postule or blotch, which appears to be the sore of leprosy, he shall be brought to Aaron the priest or to one of the priests among his descendants. If the man is leprous and unclean, the priest shall declare him unclean by reason of the sore on his head. The one who bears the sore of leprosy, shall keep his garments rent and his head bare, and shall muffle his beard. He shall cry out, unclean, unclean. As long as the sore is on him, he shall declare himself unclean, since he is in fact unclean. He shall dwell apart, 
making his abode outside the camp. The word of the Lord. St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, do everything for the glory of God. Avoid giving offense, whether to the Jews or Greeks or the Church of God, just as I try to please everyone in every way, not seeking my own benefit, but for but of that of the many that they may be saved. Be imitators of me as I am in Christ. The word of the Lord.
be with you and with your spirit. This is a reading of the Holy Gospel according to St. Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. A leper came up to Jesus and kneeling down begged him and said, If you wish, you can make me clean. Moved with pity, he stretched out his hand, touched him and said to him, I do will it be made clean. And the leprosy left him immediately and he was made clean. Then warning him sternly, he dismissed him at once. He said to him, see that you tell no one anything, but go and show yourself to the priest and offer for your cleansing what Moses prescribed. That will be proof for them. And the man went away and began to publicize the whole matter. He spread the report abroad so that it was impossible for Jesus to enter a town openly. He remained outside in deserted places, and people kept coming to him from everywhere. And for our salvation, the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Well, once again, a warm word of welcome to each and every one of you who are joining us through the internet this weekend. Uh, this is Valentine's Day weekend, whether you're joining us on Saturday the 13th or Sunday the 14th, uh, hope and pray that you and your loved ones will enjoy at least an opportunity to express your love in some sort of practical fashion, perhaps a word of acknowledgement or thank you uh, between spouses or children and parents or grandchildren and their grandparents, even siblings and their nieces and nephews, the opportunity for us uh, to say what we should say each and every day express our affection and love for those who we live and love and share life with. And so on behalf of uh, our Paris staff and all of you at home, we wish you a most blessed Valentine Day. It's also the weekend before we begin the Lenten season, and so this will be the last time we'll be in green for quite a while. Uh, but as we, can, as we uh, uh, celebrate this sixth week in ordinal time, we hear of a man who suffers from leprosy, who comes up to Jesus and kneeling in front of him says, Lord, if you will, you can cure me. And our Lord, we're told by Mark, was moved with pity. He touched him. He said, of course, I will to do it. Be cleansed. And the leprosy left him. In our Lord's day and time, leprosy was considered to be a, a very contagious disease. And because they didn't quite understand how the disease could spread from person to person, as we heard in that first reading today, anyone who had any kind of skin disorder would be immediately ostracized, set apart for fear that they would somehow spread that contagious disease to the others in the community. We might think, well, that's kind of silly except remember what we did just about a year ago when we heard about the virus called Corona-19, corona huh? What is this? We, we shut down everything. We shut down businesses. We shut down schools. We shut down churches. We shut down theaters. We shut down bowling alleys and hair salons. Why? For fear of the unknown. We didn't know much about this virus. And so in order to protect those who are healthy from getting sick and perhaps suffering and dying, we try to insulate and isolate ourselves from each other. There are no zombies that are talked about in the scriptures, although I would think that any person who suffered from leprosy would probably be considered to be the walking dead at the time of our Lord. We heard in that first reading how they were to cover their faces and that they were to cry out, unclean, unclean. In other words, stay far, far away. My infection, my disease, I need to keep to myself. The interesting thing about this gospel is how Jesus reacted to the man who suffered from leprosy. Mark tells us he was moved with pity and that Jesus touched him and said, be made clean. You know, this gospel is a good gospel for us to recall, especially if we want to consider ourselves to be the leper. And you might say, wait, wait a minute, I, I don't have leprosy. I don't consider myself to be a bad person. 
Uh, and if that's the case, then this gospel is not for you. But there will be times and occasions in each of our lives where something will happen. Sometimes we control it, sometimes we can't control it. We grow older and we lose our health and our mobility. We lose our mental acuity. And all of a sudden we say, why me, Lord, why me? This is a gospel for us. Because what Jesus does is he represents God. And God doesn't want us ever to be isolated or removed from his touch or from his love. At those times and occasions when we, when we find ourselves feeling unclean, when we have a guilty conscience, when we suffer a disease, when we become isolated and insulated from each other, when relationships fail, when marriages fall apart, when we just find ourselves alone and afraid, Let's be mindful of how Jesus acted toward the man with leprosy. He was moved with pity. He reached out and touched him. He said, be made clean. That's what this gospel can mean for us. No matter what we do, no matter how isolated or insulated we may feel, no matter how guilt-ridden we may, we may feel because of our own sinful past, God wants to reach out. God wants to embrace us. God wants us to be forgiven. God wants us to be healed. God never, ever wants to lose a relationship with any of us, his children, <clears throat> his sons and his daughters. The coming Lenten season is a wonderful, wonderful time for us to be mindful of our faults and our failings and to embrace the discipline of Lent, prayer, fasting, and almsgiving. And in the coming season of Lent, we're encouraged to pick up the cross, follow in the footsteps of Jesus, and be reconciled with God to be forgiven and to be given the grace to live a better life. As we prepare for this Lenten season, it might be good for us to keep this particular gospel in mind. No matter how, how bad we may feel, no matter how isolated we may have become during this pandemic, no matter how afraid we are of perhaps even returning to a normal life experience, God is always there. Move with pity, move with compassion, wanting to lovingly embrace us, forgive us, and bring us the fullness of his life each day. And we profess our faith. <clears throat> I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things are made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic, in apostolic church, I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead <clears throat> in the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray. For transformation, that we may present ourselves before Christ and confidently surrender to his touch all that is sinful, selfish, 
or alienating in our life, we pray for healing that all who have been scandalized by actions or inactions of those in authority may experience the healing and renewing touch of Jesus, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who feel socially isolated, that those who have been ridiculed, laughed at, or bullied may have their dignity as persons recognized and be welcomed into this faith community, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are engaged, that they may grow in their love for each other and come to know Christ's love through each other, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For married couples, that God will continue to deepen their love and help their relationship give witness to God's loving presence in the world, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For openness to the Spirit, that we may be attentive to the invitations of God to grow and change during the coming Lenten season, we pray. For healing and strength, that God will heal the sick, curb the transmission of the COVID-19 virus, sustain all who care for the sick, guide those who are working to administer the vaccine, we pray. For the sick, for those who care for them, we especially remember in prayer Michelle Heaton, Ken DeLuca, Marianne White, Rico Bianchi, Dave O'Brien, John Conville, Logan Schlitt, Arlene Piasecki, Mary Conville, David Gorsick, Father George Charnley. May God bring them healing and hope, we pray. Christ gives us the Eucharist as a pledge of everlasting life for all in our community who have died. Marilyn Moritis, mother of Jeff Moritis, Sue Dzomsky, mother of Barbara Cope, and all who have died due to the COVID-19 virus, that God will welcome them into the company of the saints forever, we pray. In this liturgy, we remember all the weekend mass intentions, the special intentions of our anniversary couples. And we remember in prayer, June Stevens, Kathy Thompson, Bernice Nutt, Michael Heyer, Bill Burke, Steve Sosha, Eileen O'Dowd, Ann Okonski, Steve Jasek, Kevin Akinto, Patricia Kress, James and Carolyn McGuire, and for all the needs that we hold in the silence of our hearts, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. Gracious and loving God, we gather in, the, in your name this day, mindful that you're the source of every goodness and blessing. At times of our own sinful behavior, we oftentimes feel alienated, alone, and in, in, in need of your mercy. Help us in the coming Lenten season to come to you with our, with our faith, experience your grace of forgiveness, and follow in the footsteps of Jesus that we may carry the cross to the glory of the resurrection. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen.
And pray, my friends, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and the glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. May this offering, O Lord, we pray, cleanse and renew us, and may it become for those who do your will the source of everlasting life. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, for in goodness you created us. When we sinned, you condemned us. In your mercy, you redeemed us through Christ our Lord. Through him, the angels praise your majesty. Dominions adore and powers tremble before you. Heaven and the virtues of heaven and the blessed seraphim worship together in exaltation. May our voice as we pray join with theirs in humble praise as we acclaim. And you are indeed holy, O Lord, the font, the source of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending your Spirit down upon them so that they may become the body and the blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, he gave you thanks, blessed it, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. Once more he gave you thanks, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant. It will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. <clears throat> we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. And therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death, and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life, the chalice of salvation, giving thanks you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that through our partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Lord, remember your church spread throughout the world, bring her to the fullness of charity with Francis our Pope and Alan our Bishop, with all the clergy and all your faithful people. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with Mary, the Blessed Virgin Mother of God, and her beloved husband Joseph, with the blessed apostles, the glorious martyrs, with St. Kenneth, and with all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and that we may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, now and forever. Amen, amen, amen.
And at the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our day, that by the help of your mercy we may also be kept free from sin, safe from needless worry or anxiety, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give to you. Look not on our sins, look instead upon the faith of the church. Graciously grant us peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. And may the peace of the Lord be with you always and with your spirit. At home, please feel free to give to each other a sign of the Lord's peace. Behold our Lord and Savior, Jesus, the Lamb of God, who takes away our sins. How happy are we to be called this day to share in the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. And together we can pray the prayer for a spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you in my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
And together we can pray our post-communion prayer of thanksgiving. Lord God, we thank you for the gift of the Eucharist that we have just received. We ask that you watch over, bless, and give strength to the members of our St. Kenneth community who are not here with us today, especially those who are sick and homebound. Lord, you invite us to live our faith each day by helping those in need and offering comfort to those in sorrow. You teach us to be compassionate to those who are suffering and to value and treasure all human life. In this Eucharist, we have celebrated your life, death, and resurrection. May we continue to live the gospel by sharing our gifts and gratitude. Bless your servants who now go forth to bring the bread of life to those who are unable to be with us, that through sharing the Eucharist here on earth, we may one day come to know your full presence in heaven. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. It has been our tradition at St. Kenneth to honor couples on honor near Valentine's Day weekend this year in 2021. Valentine's Day does fall on a Sunday. And so if you are celebrating a significant wedding anniversary in this year, we certainly congratulate you and thank you for accepting the vocation of being a married couple and living out that vocation day in and day out as a sign of the commitment that you've made to each other in marriage we wish to honor and recognize those who have let us know that they are celebrating a significant anniversary this year. Celebrating 10 years, Phil and Marty Morrison, Mark and Heather Fitzminer, Nick and Joanna Vagy. Celebrating 15 years of married life, Angelo and Sue Gariso, Don and Joan McCurcher, Dan and Reggie Shemansky. Celebrating 20 years of marriage, Doug and Colleen Danikowski, Andy and Michelle Kolesvarni, Larry and Lisa Postel, Jim and Diana Predholm, Eric and Melissa Rothart, and George and Shirley Zambiazzi. Celebrating their silver anniversary this year, Ron and Jan D'Andrea, Pat and Maureen Dunn, Mike and Michelle Furrer, Joe and Andrea Henderson, Dan Higgins and Megan Mead Higgins, John and Beth Russell, Michael and Sherry Sanson. Celebrating 30 years of marriage, Matt and Terry Allen, Mike and Michelle Belzac, Rick and Anne Marie Brace, Jim and Sherry Kirky, Larry and Anne Lawak, Michael and Cheryl Montemayor, Rich and Lynn Nolke. 35 years of marriage this year, Dave and Beth Fartek, Tom and Mary Sintaliva, Jim and Mary Beth Morabito, Tony and Christina Tabazinski. Celebrating 40 years of marriage, Tom and Debbie Amrain, Chris and L. Jean Denitis, John and Diane Guzik, Jack and Sharon Lehman, Larry and Cecilia Legelski, Tom and Olga Millian, Mark and Maureen Richter, Joe and Rachel Rocco, celebrating 45 years of marriage this year, Roy and Lucy Coloma, Paul and Kathy Densky, Walt and Gloria Zelski, Rich and Marilyn Kostruski, Bob and Sheila Molka, Mike and Grace Liskawa, celebrating their golden anniversary, 50 years of marriage, John and Lorraine and Derry, George and Joyce Comps, Rick and Lori Friday, Jim and Ruth Harvey, Paul and Chris Lakatos, Joe and Jan Lapata, Greg and Meg Lysak, Jim and Ann Malloy, Tom and Paula Netchel, Ron and Chris Redzaluski, Len and Jan Tober, Dan and June Ventimiglia, Mike and Becky Viola, Celebrating 55 years of marriage this year, Larry and Dolores Gaston, Jan and Patty Golan, John and Carol Megden, Ray and Ceci Miller, Dennis and Linda Predholm, and those who are over 60 years of marriage, Jerry and, and J Shirley, Shirley and Jerry Brown, Dick and Jean Hoffman, Robert and Arlene Sliqua. Bill and Elaine Boyke, 61 years. Rich and Jeannie Storm, 61 years. Patrick and Juanita Suhi, 62 years. 
Lynn and Irene Mezarowski, 62 years. Pat and Sarah Telesco, 62 years. Phil and Pat Sexton, 63 years of marriage. Tom and Lois Kramer, 64 years of marriage. Frank and Pat Barron, 65 years of marriage. Rich and Roz Carbett, 65 years of marriage. Rocky and Marilyn Simone, 65 years of marriage. And the winner of the most married life this year, we need a drum roll, please. Hey, Ray and Bernice Kampoltovich, 71 years of married life. Congratulations to all of our married couples. You deserve a long ride of applause. Thank you so much. Let us pray. Having fed upon these heavenly delights, we pray, O Lord, that we may always long for the food by which we truly live, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you, and with your spirit. May Almighty God bless us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Enjoy a wonderful Valentine's Day again. Congratulations to all our married couples. We now go forth in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen.